folks, welcome to Play Branson, the show where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. I'm your host, Chris Meyer, and on today's episode, it's brought to you by iBranson.com, where you can find the latest Branson show schedules and attraction information. So be sure to go to iBranson.com. On today's show, we have Emily Baker, who plays Queen Esther, and Dan Colony, who plays King Xerxes, at Sight and Sound's Queen Esther production. Super excited to have them on the show today. You know, every so often I'll tell you guys about our Play Branson magazine. Well, today I have the entertainer that's on the cover. That's kind of cool. So if you haven't picked up a Play Branson magazine yet, you better do it. It's a great tool to help you plan your time in Branson. Now, it's Ozark Mountain Christmas in Branson. And Ozark Mountain Christmas runs from November 1st to January 7th. What a great time of year to come to Branson. If you're home and you haven't made your reservations yet, now's the time to celebrate the Christmas season in Branson. We've got the best Christmas shows, shopping, Christmas light drive throughs like the Lights of Joy, and over six and a half million lights out at Silver Dollar City. This is the town to visit to get into that Christmas spirit. Now, if you haven't liked us yet on social media, go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel at Play Branson, or you can find us on Facebook as well. We'll be right back with Emily Baker and Dan Culley from Sight & Sound. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. And on today's show, for the first time, I have Emily Baker, yes. who plays Queen Esther in Queen Esther. I do, yes. Yeah. Can, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So we always like to talk about history and mm -hmm. how you got into this business, mm -hmm. uh, because you don't get that on stage. That's right. And yeah. so tell people how you got into this business and kind of your career path. Sure. So I grew up on Long Island, and I was kind of on some sort of stage for as long as I can remember. I started dancing originally, and then when we moved off of Long Island, I started doing choir and band, um, and then I did my first real musical theater show when I was 10, oh, and wow. I absolutely fell in love with it. And ever since then, it's just been a part of my life. Uh, when I graduated high school, I actually attended the Sight and Sound Conservatory, which is a program, a super unique learning opportunity that they offer out in the Lancaster location of Sight and Sound. I did that for a year. And then after that, I was hired as a swing at our Lancaster location. Okay, so someone may not understand what a swing is, so tell okay. people what that is. All right, so a swing is basically a person in the cast who is hired to be able to swing into any pattern. So if someone is sick or if they have okay. PTO that day, I basically knew all of the female patterns so I could swing in for those things. And for me, I was a swing for the ensemble pattern. So I wasn't going in for any of the named roles or anything like that. But yeah, that's what I did as a swing. And so what year was that? That was 2016. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they sent me out here and I've been in Branson ever since. Okay, so Long Island to yeah. Branson, Missouri. That's a pretty big cultural shift. Yeah, so it actually went Long Island, Pennsylvania, and I lived there with my family for 10 years there, and then out to Branson. So I've just been hopping down the coast. Yeah. yeah. And so tell people about the roles you've been playing in Branson here. Sure. So most recently, I was just had the opportunity to share the role of Mary with Tiffany, who you interviewed uh, this past year. And so that was super fun in our Miracle of Christmas show. That was a blast. And now I have the opportunity to play Queen Esther. Okay. Yeah. So you, like, from really a young age, you mm -hmm. wanted to do this. Yeah, I think I did. I think I was in the same boat as maybe a lot of performers in that, I didn't think it was actually a career that could work for me. I just knew that it was something that I loved to do. And so 
the Lord actually was kind of the one who just drove me into pursuing it for schooling and then who brought me to Sight and Sound to actually do it for my career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so tell people about the show. Like, maybe they don't know who Queen Esther is. They don't know a lot about Sight and Sound. Yeah. Of course, we hope everybody's heard of Sight and Sound, <laughs> but I know there's people out there that they would never heard of it. Mm -hmm. So tell people a little bit about the show. Sure. So at Sight and Sound, we bring the Bible to life on an absolutely epic scale. So this story with Queen Esther, it is set in the Persian Empire. It's the city of Susa. So on stage, it is you're completely surrounded and just drenched in the city of Susa. And we follow the story of a young Jewish girl. Her name is Hadassah. And she is actually taken from her family. She has to hide the fact that she's Jewish. So that's why we call her Esther. That's her Persian name. And she eventually becomes queen of Persia, which is just wild. And we find out that she was placed there by God all along so that she could eventually mm. save her people from all being killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's bringing the Bible to life mm -hmm. uh, and what if you had to sum up the message in like just a sentence or two what would you say the message is of this show yes i would say the message of this show is you watch esther's life and you see that in every detail in every moment of her life though you might not have seen it as she walked through it in the end you realize god was in the details mm, all along and yeah. he never left her alone yeah so that is the story that we're telling people at the end i get to just look out at the audience and tell them like this was the story for esther this was the story for me emily and now this is truth for you as well yeah so it's would you, would you describe it as a musical or a yes. play? Or how would you describe it? Musical. musical. We're singing, we're dancing, yes, all the things for yeah. sure. Yeah. Now, how long did it take you to learn this part? So we start rehearsals around the end of January and then mm. we open the show mid March. Okay. So that was kind of our time frame for rehearsals. Yeah. So yeah. really what, three, two and a half, three months? Yep. Yeah, I, I'm just, just always, I'm always a fascinated, like <laughs> how you guys can rememorize so much. Like, yeah, I, it just blows me away. Yeah. So do you have, do you have like secrets or tips or tools on how to memorize stuff? You know, I don't think I do. I think I just, I think I just read the script over and over again and then it just sticks in my brain. Yeah. yeah I don't know. It just kind of works. Now, you have these amazing costumes. Yes. You want to talk about those? I would love to. The costumes are some of my absolute favorite that Sight & Sound has ever done. The thing that I love about this show is that it is so big, it's so grand and beautiful, but just like we talked about how God is in the details, the details are so well done. So these costumes are beautiful, they're so sparkly, there are so many long capes. I have a 15 foot long cape, it's incredible. Um, I bet it's heavy. It is, yes. I think it's like 17 pounds. Yeah, that's some, pretty heavy. something like that's, that. It's pretty heavy. Um, but they're just so well done yeah. and they really add to the story that yeah. we're trying to tell. So you, you mentioned details and God is in the details. And so I have this saying that maybe someday I'll be famous for, maybe <laughs> not, but it's detail separates those that are good from those that are better. Mm. And so at Sight and Sound, you guys pay attention to those details. And I think if you like the whole, like it's almost hard to describe the set. It really almost is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the way I describe it, when we first saw it in rehearsals, it felt like we were in an actual city. Like you can be on one side of the stage and not even see your friend anymore who's all the way on the other side. It's just beautiful. It's the biggest single set that Sight & Sound has ever done. And what's really fun about this set in particular, like the city of Susa, is that it's revealed in the beginning of the show and that's where we stay the whole time. Lots of times with our shows, the sets will move and we'll go to a new location, but we stay in Susa the whole time. But what's really fun is that new locations are revealed. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like a massive dollhouse. So different parts of the set will spin or will come out from yeah. a different set piece. It's just incredible. And honestly, yes. it adds to that message that we're saying about how new details are revealed through the show and you see, oh, there's something more here. Like yeah. you just take back layer by layer. So yeah, it's now, incredible. 
we're gonna the, the next segment we would normally keep talking to you, but we're gonna adjust and yes. we are going to now talk to your future yes. husband, right? Is yes. that not in real life, folks, but part of the show, right? <laughs> yes, King Xerxes. King Xerxes. So yes. um Emily, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you and so the next much segment, we're gonna go to King Xerxes. And so folks, we'll be back in just a second with more upon Queen Esther from Sight and Sand. Going to Branson for some relaxation and fun? You've got to stay with Branson's award-winning hotel family, Meyer Hotels. Meyer Hotels features five hotels in Branson with the best locations for your trip. Choose from brands you know and trust, like the Holiday Inn Express on Green Mountain Drive, the Best Western Music Capital Inn, the Best Western Center Point Inn, Comfort Inn at Thousand Hills, and the Comfort Inn and Suites. Enjoy refreshing indoor pools and hot tubs. Do you like free? How about a free hot breakfast each morning? Free vacation planning services, and of course, smiles are always free. Want even more value? Go to MeyerHospitality.com and join our e-club to save 15% off your next stay and check out incredible deals with our vacation packages. Call 1-877-FUNSTAY to book Branson's award-winning hotels or visit MeyerHospitality.com. It's your safe choice for award-winning lodging in Branson. MeyerHospitality.com. Hey folks, welcome back to the second segment of Play Branson. And on this segment, we have Dan Colony. I got it right. That's right. And so you play King Xerxes mm -hmm. in Queen Esther over at Sight and Sound. So welcome to the show. Thank you. So Glad to be here. It's good to have you here. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about that role, but just like we did on the previous segment, take us back into your performing history and how did you get into this business? Sure. Yeah, I'm from New Jersey originally. And I have some performers in the family, my grandmother and mother, they were dancers. They had a dance studio up in New Jersey. And I got into it about 13 years old. I was kind of pushed into it actually. I was a very shy kid. Um, but I found that theater was actually really good for that because it allowed me to become a character and entertain people doing that. And that was really neat. So jumped into that and just fell in love with it throughout high school. So yeah. you're, were you in like high school, uh, plays or those type of things? Yeah, yeah. I went to a performing arts academy in New Jersey, did that for four years. And once I graduated, I thought, let's just try this thing out. So I did some auditions in New York and it wasn't long before I found Sight and Sound. I've been there over, over 11 years now. Wow. Yeah. So so when you, when you say performance academy, was that part of your high school or was that after your high school? That was part of it. It okay. was a high school that uh, was geared towards performing arts. Interesting. Yeah. That's, it was it private then or public? It was, it was considered public, yeah, but you had to audition to get into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you really started in this business at a young age, mm -hmm. if right after that you're at Sight and Sound. That's right. Yeah, I came to Sight and Sound at 19 years old. Wow. How many people do that? Very many? There's a few. We have a conservatory program now, which a lot of our um, actors here in Branson have been a part of, and they'll get started quite young and graduate and come out here at sometimes 19, 20 years old. So... Take us on the journey from 19 till today. Like what kind of roles have you played and what have you done? Have you been here just in Branson or Lancaster? Or? Yeah, just in Branson, which honestly was a bit of a culture shock moving out here from New Jersey, but I did fall in love with it, you know, and now my yeah. whole family's out here, which is really neat. Um, but yeah, all different types of roles. Just got done doing Jesus and where I played Jesus in that show. Uh, a little bit different than Xerxes. Um, and then uh, <laughs> different ensemble, uh, understudy roles here and there. I got to understudy Pharaoh in Moses. So uh, they've given me a lot of villain roles over the, year t yeah. over the years too. <laughs> um, so were you the main lead then when you played Jesus? I was, that's correct. Okay, mm -hmm. that's pretty big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. There's a lot of pressure for yeah. sure. Yeah, great, yeah. great. Once again, another great show. Um, so tell people about the role that you are playing today. Yeah, King Xerxes. He's like your typical rock star role, you know. It's really neat. Um, King of Persia. Um, he drinks a lot. <laughs> and so uh, really you're playing even some of the uh, uh, maybe the negative side of a rock star lifestyle as well. So, right. you know, a little bit too much partying and drinking um, and some mood swings. But on the other side of that, there's also that performing aspect as well that he's got uh, and so a lot of fun to play that role not your typical villain um, we have 
a villain in the show, and then we've got Xerxes, who is kind of swayed by that character. So he kind of goes back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. So did you did you find it hard or difficult to do at all? Good question. Like I said, being that uh, performing personality, that part of it was a lot of fun, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and over the years, having played some villain roles and kind of figuring out what that looks like, it, it was maybe one of the easier roles to jump into. Um, not saying that I relate to it uh, yeah. all, all that much, but uh, being able to play that character that's so different, there's something a lot of fun about that, just yeah. to jump into something completely different and just try things and see if they land, you know. But that's, about, that's part of being an actor, that's right? right? Like, yeah. is you gotta take on a role, even yeah. if it's not who you are. Mm -hmm. And so that's what makes it fun. It, it, absolutely, yeah. So um, the show itself, uh, we talked a lot about that the last half, but there's some things we didn't mention. So let's talk about the cast size. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of paint the picture of how big this cast is. Yeah, this cast has 50 plus actors in it. And so we really fill that stage. You know, as Emily talked about, the set is massive. And honestly, there's people in our cast that I never see because they're over there on the Hebrew side and I'm over here on the palace side. Uh, so it, it really is a, a big production with a big cast. Yeah, and that's probably the biggest cast in Branson. Mm. Probably. Right? I mean, yeah. I, I can't think of anybody else that would have a bigger cast in Branson. Now, something else you guys have that is very unique too is animals. That's right, yeah. Yeah, we've got all different kinds of animals in this show. We typically have horses, camels, goats, sheep, donkeys. Those are kind of a standard. Uh, Xerxes gets to ride a horse in the show, so that's a lot of fun. I get to trot out the center aisle and trot back in. Sometimes the horse gets carried away and I canter out the center aisle and have to slow him down a little bit. Um, but yeah. The horses are a big part of it. Uh, in this show specifically, we have, we've got a few different dogs that are a lot of fun. Xerxes has a little pet dog that he walks around with and sometimes sits on the throne. And then we have other smaller dogs in the show. Yeah, so like you guys underneath the theater have a animal training facility. That's right. And I got to see that years ago and on a tour years ago. And a lot of people I don't think realize that you guys have this training facility for the animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got about a 10,000 square foot barn downstairs, and then we also have a massive arena down there where we're training our animals. So, for example, me, for Xerxes, I would go down there during rehearsals, and I would work with the horses, and um, I think I'd put in maybe 20 hours of rehearsing with the, the horses um, before we started the show, and then occasionally have to go down and work on some things here or there because it's a big job to, to work with those animals. Yeah, yeah. What, what's, what's the show mean to you? I mean, I mean, and that may be a weird question, but like, can you, can you, what does it mean to you? Sure, now, I think the message that people are not alone and that God is in every detail of their lives is, is, uh, is clear and it's a beautiful message that we get to portray, just that alone. But honestly, culturally, there's a lot of things going on nowadays that we, um, that we speak to in this show. And it's really interesting to see those parallels. Yeah. Okay, folks, so if you haven't grasped this show yet, let's, I wanna recap for just a second, probably one of the biggest sets in probably the entire country. And I mean, it's massive. It's not just on the stage in front of you, but it's on the sides as well. We talked about costumes. Mm -hmm. You like your costumes? Oh yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah? They're pretty cool. So we talked about amazing costumes, great entertainers, big, I mean, Folks, you just, you're gonna be blown away if you go to this show. That's all I can tell you. And um, whether people are of faith or not, it's awesome. Like, it's just a great show. I would agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So folks, you need to go out, check them out, Sight and Sound. They're gonna be going through the, really about the end of the year. Um, and we'll give you a little bit more information on their schedule in the closing segment. So we'll be back in just a minute to wrap the show up. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. Our guests this week was Emily Baker and Dan Colony from Sight and Sound. Now, 
Queen Esther goes through December 30th this year, and you can find most of their shows at either 3.30 or 7.30, Tuesday through Saturday, with an occasional 11.30 show on a Saturday there. And next year, the show will run through October 5th. So you want to be sure to come either this year or next year to see Queen Esther, and then it'll be gone. Now, next week's artist is Maggie Campbell. She's with Rick Thomas's Mansion of Dreams show. First time on the show. Looking forward to talking to her. Here's what's coming up in Branson during Ozark Mountain Christmas in the limited engagement show scene. On November 24th, we've got Matt Gum with his special show over at Clay Cooper. And then on, in December, although this isn't a show, it, well, it's kind of a show downtown is the Adoration Parade in Branson. And so it's a great opportunity to take your family out and see some a Christmas parade. And it's got a long history. Uh, also, December 4th, we have Matt Gum with a special show in December 16th as well. And then on December 10th, the Springfield Symphony Orchestra is going to be over at the Mansion Theater with some local choirs performing. So you may want to check that out as well. Now, if you need help planning your Branson vacation, be sure to go to ibranson.com or call 1-877-ENTERTAIN. You can find the latest show schedules, attractions, and lodging options on ibranson.com. Now you can catch a new episode of Play Branson every week at 8 p.m. on the Vacation Channel. That's Channel 6 on Optimum Cable or 36-1 if you watch by Antenna. And you can catch our other episodes throughout the day as well on the Vacation Channel. Once again, be sure to like us on YouTube or Facebook as well. Thanks for watching Play Branson, Branson's Entertainer Show. As I've always said, music is better live, so go see some live music this week. That's it for today. We'll see you next week on Play Branson.